Hi, in this session I'm going to cover how to create a donut chart. A donut chart, when you really think about it, is a pie chart with a hole right in the middle of it. You've probably seen them in magazines or newspapers, and for the most part, if you can use a pie chart, you probably should, but there are some uses for a donut chart. And I'll show you some examples of some interesting ways you can create some graphics with a donut chart. So here is a basic donut chart here. I'll cover how to create this uh, later. I'll just show you some, some examples right now. Here is another example of a donut chart where we kind of have two donuts, a larger donut and a smaller donut in there. Basically, it's kind of two sets of data. And this third example is another donut chart, but this one's showing a particular feature that donut charts don't really have. Uh, if you notice, in both of these examples, you have this uh, leader line. It describes what the particular uh, donut is uh, attributed to. This in this example, 2013, and the other and, and the other smaller donut is 2012. However, these leader lines don't show up in donut charts. They show up in pie charts uh, natively. There's no real way to get them to automatically show up when you add a label. So there, right here, it looks like it shows up, but this is kind of a hack. It, it looks it's adding actually a pie chart, which does have leader lines when you pull out this particular text. And I'll show you that example later on. Now in the fourth example here, this is more of a intricate example of a donut chart and how we can turn a donut chart into almost like an infographic. So this is something where you can create an Excel and you can put it as a visual in a PowerPoint slide. So I'll show you how to create these four examples. Let me go to sheet one first and open up a new sheet here. Let me just bring it over here so it looks easier to view. Now this particular initial donut chart is pretty basic. Let's say I've, I'm going to copy this data over here. Select that control C to copy. Uh, actually let me bring over the full table here. Control C to copy and then control V to paste. To create a basic donut chart all you need to do is select the data and go into insert and over here in the charts group just select other charts and we have our donut chart. We can either do the donut chart or the exploded donut. Basically, you're just taking a piece out of the donut chart. I'm going to go with the basic first, and you'll see that we have our sales data here, and we've got a legend. And if we wanted to pretty this up a little bit, what we can do is uh, actually, I shouldn't have added that total there since it's added to the chart. So since the data is selected here, I can actually go in and move it up so it removes this total. What I want to do is bring this total and put it into the center there. And what that is, it basically it's going to be a text box. So I like to move this legend up here so I can click that legend, go into layout, and go to labels, put the legend at the top. So it makes it a little bit nicer. I'm going to insert a text box. Now the text box icon, it shows up here under layout. It can also show up under, uh, let's see, insert, home. You can get it here. Or if you go to shapes, you'll get it uh, here. But since we've already in layout, I'm just going to go ahead and enter it here. So I'm going to click that and drag, left mouse click and kind of drag the box here. And in this box, I'm going to go up to the formula bar and just type equal and then that amount. So I'm, I'm going to click that particular cell and it's going to reference that cell right there. Once I press enter, it's going to be there. So let me go ahead and maybe make this box a little smaller, put it a little bit more centered and probably add data labels on the rest of the slices for the pot for the donut. So I'm going to right mouse click and under here I'm going to go add data labels. So it's going to add the data labels for each of the sales for each of the re regions. So that's the basic donut chart here. If you want to make it a little pretty you can probably go under the layout or excuse me design and under the chart styles group uh, I like to add a little bit of 3D 3D-ish effect there and it makes it look kind of nice, kind of neat. So that's the first example. The second example, let me go here to sheet two, is if we have uh, two sets of data, one for 2012 and 2013. So you can see here we have our first set of data here and our second set of data and when you add a, a second set of data in the columns, so you're gonna have multiple donuts uh, layered, on, layered at, next to each other. So let me go ahead and just copy this set here. I'm just going to go ahead and copy 2012 to 2013. Uh, let me go ahead and add a new tab here and move it over here. Increase the size here a little bit. And control V to, oops, let me go back. 
Control C to copy, and then Control V to paste. So what I'm going to do here, I've got my data selected. I'm just going to go insert and insert a chart here. So once I insert that there, you'll see that it's put that information in there. So it doesn't really give you a good label when you think about it, unless you hover over it. So I see I have 2012 here, and this is 2013. So again, I'm going to put this legend, go to layout, put on the top. I usually, usually like it on the top. It saves room. So how do I get these? icons or these uh, text box in there. So basically I'm going to insert some shapes. So if I go under the insert group here, click on shapes, there's a couple call out shapes here. You can, I can select from a few here. So I'm just going to select this one, this line call number one. And I know this one is 2012, so I'm going to, oops, let me select that shape again. Let me get that shape. And now I've got it here. So I'm going to go and put it over here. And this box is a little bit big. Let me just go, well, let me go ahead and type the number in there first, 2012. And that is pretty big, so I'm just going to make it a little smaller. And now with these yellow markers here, I can actually move it to the appropriate place. I'm going to move it over here. So that is the marker. And let me go ahead and just select that marker. Whoops, I think I took out, made it the box too small. All right, so now I'm going to move the marker back here. Now, since the box is selected, I can make one for 2013. I can just press Control D, since it's already selected, Control D, and it will duplicate that box. And I'm going to put it over here. I'll just put this one over here and make this 2013. All right. Now, if I add labels here, let me get add labels, actually, to make it a little bit more clear in my the next step I'm going to do. So I'm adding data labels here. And I'm going to add the data labels on the outer part. So you'll notice after I added data labels, these markers didn't move with the chart. So basically, I would have to move the data labels. Or I'd have to move these uh, leader lines accordingly with the chart. So that's other things you need to think about when you layer something on top of it. Oh, I noticed that it picked up 2013, 2012 and 2013. Oh, it probably thought that it was a part of the data here. So that was wrong. So what we can do here is we can either move it here or we can actually select the chart and take it out. And we go under layout, oops, go under design, go to select data. You'll notice that it added the region as part of the access labels, the categories. You'll notice that there is no remove here like there is here. So what I can do is I can just switch it and I select on the region and remove it and this switches back and click OK. What I first should have done is I should have just had selected uh, from A2, A2 to C5. But you can see that Excel is pretty flexible and lets you do a couple of things to adjust your data. So that's what we have for this example. So we can add these kind of uh, leader line boxes. Our other example is where we have some dynamic nature for the leader line boxes. So for example, let's say that I changed east. I changed that to something really small like 20. You'll notice that you know in the previous example, when I changed the chart, I'd have to kind of move these leader lines with these labels around. But it, with, in this example, you don't. I'm going to press Enter, and you'd notice East kind of moved down over there. But you, these leader lines have moved with the chart. So how do we do this? Basically, these are two charts. There is the donut chart here, and right behind it is a pie chart, which has all the slices made invisible except for having these labels uh, seen. So how do we create that? Let me show you. I'll go ahead and create another worksheet here. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this data. Control Z to copy. Control V to paste. To make this a little bit bigger here. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the pie chart like I did before. And I'm going to move this over to the top. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a pie chart now. So I'm going to go and select this data, Control C to copy, and I select in the chart. And I'm going to go do a paste special. So I'm going to go up here under Paste Special. And this Paste Special window comes up. I want to insert it as a new series. And click OK. And you'll see that it's actually turned it into another pie chart, excuse me, another donut chart. What I'm going to do is select that donut chart. Let me go ahead and get in there. Let me select this other series and change the chart type. And turn that into a pie. Click 
click OK, and now we have a pie chart. So you notice that when I click it, there's still a donut chart right behind it. Right? Click outside and I click here. Oops, let me click it one more time. You can see if I click the slice there. If I click these slices, it's going to select the pie. So sometimes you may have difficulty in clicking and making sure that you, you selected the correct chart. What you can do is go under Layout or Format. We have this uh, current selection, and you can go under here, and we can look at whether we want our first series or series sales. That was probably our first series, and this is the series 2, is the, the pie chart. So you can notice that it selected series two. But if I click series sales here, you'll notice that the outline for the donut chart has come up. So I want to make sure that my pie chart is selected. Let me go ahead and select the pie chart here. Or I can go up here in the current selection and select series A, which is the pie chart. And right click it. And you'll notice that sometimes when you right click it, it goes back to the donut chart, which is the series sales. I want to make sure that is series two, which is the pie chart and then add the data labels because we don't want to add the data labels to the donut chart we want to add it to the pie chart and you see like it's done it again uh, let me go ahead and go back to series two maybe we'll carefully go over one of the selections in the pie chart and right click and make sure it stays in series two yep it does here and add data labels so once I add the data labels what I can do is I can pull them out now so I can select each one and pull them out and you notice once I pull them out the leader lines will show up see that one showed up this one, uh, since I think it came up there, let me go ahead and move it. Oh, it did show up. Let me go ahead and pull this out. It will show up. And let me go ahead and pull that out, and it's going to show up. And once that's done, what I'm going to do is make this pie invisible now. So I'm going to select the slices. Whoops. We went back to the donut chart. So let me just go ahead and select Series 2. And if you're having a hard time selecting it with the mouse, you can just press Control 1. It's going to bring up the Format Data Series window. And what I want to do is select fill and no fill. So basically, it has gotten rid of the pie. But it's also kept these slices. So I want to get rid of the border color too. So I have no line. So let me click close and see if that took care of it. Yes, it did. All right. So now that's gone. And when we adjust our chart, the data, let's say that we made this smaller. Um, well, actually, let's make this bigger. This 20. Let's make this back to 500. You'll see that now it's moved. See, so to show you that this is actually the the pie chart. So let me show you the data labels for the donut chart. Let me go ahead and right click and add data label. You'll notice that, whoops, let me control Z to do that. I think I only selected one slice of that donut. Let me go ahead and select it again. You'll see all the donut slices are selected. Right click, go to add data labels, and now we've got the data labels there. So to show you what I mean by the leader lines not being apparent in not showing up in a donut, if I pull that out, you'll see that there are no leader lines. But for a pie chart, it automatically adds them in there. So that's the that's the plus of having a pie chart is when you start to pull your labels out there, it adds some kind of guideline for that where you don't have it in a donut chart. But that could be easily remedied remedied by incorporating a donut chart into a pie chart. So that's the third example. Let's get to the fourth example. So this example is something that wouldn't prove anything that useful in an Excel, but maybe something that is more visually appealing when you take it out and put it into a PowerPoint slide. So I'll show you how to create this one. Basically, it's four donuts. One, well, basically three donuts. One, two, three. And then the, this third one is, is just an additional uh, shape that I put in there. So I'm not going to use. Uh, I'm not going to create three rings. I'll just create two rings. Three rings take a little bit too much time, but let me go ahead and create two rings, and then you'll understand how to create the additional outer ring. Just if I create the second ring, let me go ahead and add another sheet here, make it a little bit bigger, and I'm just going to bring over this data. So the reason why we have it in columns is, is as our, you saw in the previous example, each column represents an additional ring in the donut. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring out. And the CEO one is that's basically just a marker. So I'm just going to go and select from A2 to A12. And let's see, Control C to copy. Actually, let me bring the let me bring the uh, the, the headers too. Let me go ahead and Control C to copy, and then Control V to paste. So this is data for the donut. So once I select this, I'm going to insert and go under Insert Other Charts Donut. 
So you can see that it's put it there. I'm going to just get rid of the legend. I don't need this legend now. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Click that and press delete. And I've got this particular, I've got the first ring, which is the other CXOs that report under a CEO. So let me go ahead and hover over it. You can see that that's CIO, this one is the COO, and this one is the CFO. I'm going to add the labels there. So I'm going to right click that first donut and add data labels. And I'm going to change that to the to the names, the category names. So I'm going to right click, format data label, and then have the category names show up instead of the values. Right? Do the same for the outer ring. Uh, click it, make sure it's selected, right click, add data labels, and then right click again and add, format the data format the data labels here. And then go ahead and add click the category name and deselect the value. So you notice that there's some concepts that you need to be aware of. Now a donut or a pie is 360 degrees, so when you want to divide up the pie, you always have to keep that into consideration. Each slice, uh, if you want to make it a whole, the sum of the slices need to equal up to 360. So in the center, I'm going to assume that's going to be the CEO, like I had in the previous tab. And the outer parts of the donut, these should all total up to 360. So I have to divide that up. So depending on how many slices you have in that first donut or the second or third donut, you have to divide it up accordingly, uh, 360 accordingly to that. So in, in essence, really, this is, since there's three here, it'd be 360 divided by three, which is 120 each. Uh, this is pretty uh, small amount of uh, slices, so I just did that manually, but I mean, if you just had more, you can just do uh, equal 360 uh, divided by three. And you can do that accordingly for all, all of it here. Now, when you go down to the second slices, we're, we're imagining that uh, there's some, certain folks that are under this particular category. And so what we have is our, let's just take our COO category right here. Our COO category is comprised of marketing, sales, and HR. So all of these really need to add up to that. So basically this 40 needs to, these set need to add up to that. So I'm going to go, so I manually added these in, but in essence you basically can go equal uh, 120, or you can just reference that, divided by the three, the three other slices here, divided by three. So that comes out to 40, all right? And the same here for the others. So finance and tax, those can go under the CFO. So if there's only two, it should be divided by two is a 60 each, which is this here. And the same for IT and development that are reporting under the CIO. That is 60-60, respectively. So those got to match up right. And when you create this, you have to keep in mind uh, when you're doing that. You want to make sure that they add up accordingly. So as you see here, we have our COO. And it's composed of marketing, sales, and HR. You see how neatly it, the borders kind of line up here, right? So that's perfect in that sense. Now, once I've created these rings, the the rest of it is making it look more presentable. So once I have the, the labels uh, and all the bordering kind of worked out, I can just work on formatting the colors and everything else. So in the layout or design, I can just go under, and I like that 3D effect again, so I'll just go ahead and select the style 26. I want to make sure that the outer rings are grouped accordingly. So let's say that we'll just stick with the what they gave us here in the inner ring here. So purple for CIO, green for CFO, and red for COO. So I'm going to start with this one first. COO is red. Uh, let's see, I think that is, let me go ahead and right click and let's see, I think that was this color, right? Let's see, no, it was this color. Yeah, so red accent too. So I'm going to select that, make sure that that's the part. And now I'm going to select this, oops, now I'm going to select this slice, this outer slice here. Right click and click on the shape fill. Now once I've done that once, I can probably just select each additional slice and press, press F4. And it's going to repeat the last command. I'm going to select that. You see it's selected, press F4. Now I'm going to go to CFO and make the outer layers of the CFO green. So make sure that that's the green I want. I can select that again. You can see now that the markers are just for that CFO slice. Right click and make sure that's the green that I want. I think that's the green or is this the green here? Well, I'll choose this green or maybe 
uh, yeah, this olive green is what it is. So select that, and I'm gonna select the outer the outer slice here. Press F4, and the outer slice here, and press F4. And for the CIO one here, let me go and select CIO, right click, and then I think that was the purple in this one. Yep, uh, purple accent four. Click that and select the IT slice. Make sure it's only only selected here. Press F4 and select Dev. Make sure that's only selected there. Press F4. Now we can also make the, the rings a little bit bigger. Uh, right now they look kind of thin, right? So we can make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to select one, the inner donut, right click, and go under Format Data Series. And so let's adjust the donut hole size. Let me see. So once I adjust the donut hole size, it will reflect the size or the width of the, do the donut slices a little bit better. So I think I'm just going to make the donut hole size a little smaller. Let's see what happens when I do 10%. I think 10% is the lowest I can go with the slider. If I try to enter zero, it's not going to be a donut, right? So we'll keep that there. And how do I get that? If I go back here, how do I get that CEO circle there? Well, that's basically an another shape. So I'm going to go under, uh, let's see, I think it's layout. I can add a shape here, insert shape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the this oval. You notice that there's no circle here, but once you click on that, to make a circle shape, all you need to do is press the shift key and left click and just drag a circle there. If you didn't left click it, it's going to create a oval. But if you left click and press the shift key together, it'll create a perfect circle. So it's still selected here. I'm going to go ahead and press the equal sign. I'm going to reference CEO here and press enter. You'll see CEO shows up. I'm going to do some formatting here now. Select that. Right click. Go under format object. And under the text box, let's make the vertical alignment center in, uh, in the middle. And the text horizontal, that's fine. Click close. And I didn't like that blue color. So I, I like the black, so I'm going to select the black here. Oops. Let me go ahead and since this is selected, press Control A for Control All. And I think this text fill, let's make that white. Yes, that took care of it. So I know the rest of it now is just kind of moving around. And now we have our donut chart, which we can paste into a presentation. So if you had other layers out here, you can add a fourth column, a fifth column, a sixth column, and just kind of repeat the steps that I did previously. So those are the several examples of donut charts. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.